So today's video is for beginner photographers because we will be discussing the concepts behind the exposure triangle. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel and also welcome to my home studio and thank you very much. This is my wife Coco. She will be helping us today while I demonstrate what it is about the exposure triangle. So I guess you guys have probably heard what the exposure triangle is, especially for you guys who are starting with photography. Everyone will say to get the proper exposure, you have to master the exposure triangle. But what is it really? It is a correlation between your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture. Now with photography, okay, you know what? I'm going to be doing this also. So I want to teach Coco photography too. With photography, our camera is basically very similar to our eye. So we have our lens, which is basically our pupil, your shutter speed, which is your eyelids, and of course your ISO, which is more or less your brain on how sensitive your brain is to light. So whenever we're shooting, let's say for example right now, babe, we're shooting, the proper exposure is determined by all three factors with what I am seeing. So I'm seeing you now, because my brain is saying that this is the amount of light that I should be able to understand or to process. My pupils are allowing the light to enter and my, my um, eyelids is basically my shutter. It opens up and closes for light to enter my eyes so that we can get the proper image. So that is what really all these things are. That's the basic principle of photography. We're actually lucky right now that most of the new camera systems are what we call the mirrorless system. In other words, what you see is what you get, or it can give you a proper representation of your actual exposure. Unlike when we started, I still had to basically take a shot and then view it afterwards. Well, I did start with a digital age. Imagine having to do that in film. You'll have to wait till the film is developed to see if you got the proper exposure. So it got easier and easier. Um, the, mo the more the technology got more advanced. So we're here now where we have an actual live view of our exposure. So that is actually what you are seeing now. So this little screen that you've been seeing is what my camera is actually seeing because I am recording it here with an external recorder. So this is my live view. This is what the effects are or this is how my exposure is because of my exposure triangle. The shutter speed, as I said, is basically your eyelid. It opens and closes to allow light to come in. So the faster, you see the number right there below, one over, that represents your shutter speed. So it can go up to one eight thousand of a second or as low as, well, this bulb mode so it, you could keep it as open as long as possible when you want to do night photography. But the main thing with shutter speed is that it controls movement. So whenever you're shooting, you notice whenever you're shooting, sometimes your shutter speed is so low or you feel the camera that when you take a shot, it just goes click and then click. It takes such a long time and you get a lot of motion blur. That's basically your shutter speed working. The slower your shutter speed is means that the shutter is open longer, which now affects motion. So the slower the shutter speed is, the more motion blur you'll have, the faster your shutter speed is, then you will be able to freeze motion. So whenever we're shooting our kids, if we want to freeze motion, we try to bring our shutter speed as high as possible so that the shutter opens as quickly as possible. In this particular case, you notice how everything is affected by my shutter speed. If I go at one over 8,000, it removes all existing ambient light too. And if I bring it uh, lower, it allows more light to enter. That's a thing. Whenever you're thinking about shutter speed, it's supposed to control motion. But with shutter speed also, the more you have, the longer it is, the more your sensor is exposed to light. So that's where the balance comes in because that's the exposure triangle. No one aspect can work without um, the help of others. So let's say for example, in this particular case, I want to keep my exposure at, or my shutter speed at one over 800. Because at one over 800, or let's say for example, I want to shoot at one over 600 or one over 500. I'll shoot at one over 500 because 
let's say I'd want to shoot you later while you are dancing. So you want to freeze a bit of motion. So 1 over 500 is okay. It's safe, but it's not really perfect for quick movements like sports. But so far, 1 over 500 is good. But at 1 over 500, you see that everything's dark. So if I take a shot right now, everything's dark. So that's where aperture comes in now. Aperture is your eyelids or your pupils. So you notice when at night, your pupils, if you look at it under, well, if you really look at it, it opens up. And then in the morning, it closes. So that's basically what your aperture does. The lower the number, the bigger the opening, the more light enters your, your uh, lens, then it hits the sensor. So the higher the number, the smaller the opening. So what happens there? Aside from it letting light um, enter more or less, it also affects the depth or the depth of field of your camera. The lower the number, the more you will have background blur. The higher the number, the sharper it is from foreground to background. And basically, that's what we call bokeh. The, black blurring, uh, the blurring of the background is what's called bokeh, which, you know, for some reason or another, people are so in love with, especially when you're shooting outdoor, you just want to blur out some of the background. But of course, when you're using that, you have to use it um, thoughtfully that you don't want to bokeh while you're traveling with the Eiffel Tower in the back and just completely blurring out the Eiffel Tower. You want everything in focus too. So in this particular case, the aperture is the one that controls also how much light is entering. If you notice earlier, at 1 over 500, at f5.6, there's completely no light that's entering. So that's a shot. It's pitch black. So I might have to open up my aperture to 1.2. Sorry, that wasn't on live view, so I'll put it again at 5.6. If I open up my aperture, you notice there at 1.2, we're allowing more light to enter. So therefore, we're, we can stay at 1 over 500. But let's say, for example, you didn't want to stay at 1 over 500, that you don't need to freeze motion, then 1 over 500 of your shutter speed is actually too fast. So you could usually get away with a focal length, 1 over your focal length. So your focal length right now, meaning to handhold a shot without getting any camera shake, is 1 over your focal length. But that's different from motion blur when people are moving. So normally when people are walking, you want it at one over 200 to 250 and above. But if it, you're shooting a static object and you just don't want any motion blur, it's one over the focal length. So in this case, one over 50. So we could do it at one over 50 if we want to. Notice now that we are overexposed. So if I take a shot right now, it's overexposed. I could either stop down my aperture there to get the proper exposure at f2. That's your proper exposure. So you see now the relationship between shutter speed and aperture. And I'm, I'm still making sense, right? Yeah, of course. So one over, so your aperture and your shutter speed works well together. But what if, let's say, for example, again, I wanted to shoot you while you're moving, so I have to bring up my shutter speed at one over 500 but I still want a little bit of background blur. So I'll shoot you at 1.2. So I'm trying to let as much light enter my sensor already. However, since my shutter speed is so fast, it cuts the light that's entering. That's where ISO comes in now. ISO is the sensitivity of your sensor to light. The higher the number, the more sensitive it is. So with ISO, if I shift my ISO, look what will happen. The higher the number, the more light is entering. So now I can shoot at 1 over 500, f1.2, at ISO 800. However, ISO has a downside. If you notice, whenever we're out at night and we use the small cameras, if you're shooting late at night, it's sort of grainy because then the ISO is at its maximum and that's the downside of high ISO. You'll get a lot of grain. But that's also because your camera is one of those small cameras. But if you use cameras like this one that have a big sensor who have what they, call, what they call very good high ISO performance, even if I'm shooting at high ISO, the grain is controlled. So that's where, again, technology comes in. So that's how all three things work. Your ISO is basically the sensitivity of your sensor to light, which is our brain. So whenever we're outside, 
our brain knows it's dark or it's um, or if it's bright so it will tell our brain to adjust to the images that we're getting to bring up the ISO higher or lower for night or day now the aperture is the amount of light that 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 your lens allows your that the lens allows through to hit your sensor so that's basically like the pupils of your eye so the bigger the opening means the smaller the number the smaller the number the more background blur you have so the bigger the number the smaller the opening the less light but the sharper the images is from foreground to background now your shutter speed is like your eyelids the faster your shutter speed moves the less light enters to hit your sensor the slower your shutter speed the more light enters your sensor but the slower your shutter speed you are prone to motion blur or camera shake and at the same time the faster your shutter speed you can freeze motion so that is the exposure triangle and i hope this wasn't very complicated especially for newbie photographers but the best way to learn is really experiment but when you experiment it's also important that you understand the variables that you are experimenting with now if you have some questions with regards to this subject feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i do hope you enjoyed this video and if you did subscribe to the video subscribe to the channel like this video and click that notification bell now if you want to go more advanced check out some of the videos in my channel where i tackle a lot of studio work and flash photography or even just photography in general to be honest so i hope again once again i hope you enjoyed this video until the next video